Good people of YouTube, I'm the Watch Idiot, and when the Marine Master 200 GMT, the SPB 383, and the other dials were released a few months ago, I pretty much just lost my mind because I absolutely love my Marine Master 300, but I've been wanting an easier to wear alternative, and as many of you know, I absolutely love GMT watches. So in this video, I'm going to get into all the details to see if this watch really does answer all of my prayers by being the ultimate Seiko Prospects diver or the ultimate Seiko in my case. And big thanks to Edward Arthur Jewelers. I bought this SPB 33 with my own money from Katie and Taylor. They're awesome to talk to, awesome to work with. And also they have a surprisingly ridiculously good selection of Seikos. I mean, they had the new colors of the SSK GMT before I even knew that they existed. So yeah, if you want my uh, SPB383 or any of those SSKs or pretty much any other Seiko, just shoot them an email with the watch idiot in the subject line or call in and let them know that the watch idiot sent you. Anyway, okay, let's get into it. So dimensions first, as always, especially for Seikos, because the numbers never give us the whole picture here because of the way that Seiko designs their cases. The case width is 42.1 millimeters with a lug to lug of 48.5, and it's got a lug width of 20 millimeters, and the thickness is only 13.4 millimeters, which is really great to see for a diver GMT. And on the wrist, it really wears more like a 41 millimeter watch because the bezel is on the thicker, chunkier side and the dial is on the smaller side at 28.9 millimeters. And dial size is probably one of the biggest factors when determining how big a watch will look. Going on with the dial is 0.8 millimeters smaller than the SPV143 dial and overall it's 0.5 millimeters thinner than the SPV143 as well for some general context. And the 383 actually wears thinner still because of the tapered and curved mid case and the case back sinks into the wrist and visually from an angle you don't really see the bottom half of the watch and all this comes together to make for a very comfortable watch on the wrist that also looks a lot thinner on the wrist. I'll get into this throughout the video but overall this is very much giving me strong Marine Master 300 vibes when I wear it which is something that no other baby Marine Master or Marine Master 200 has been able to accomplish for me which is huge because the Marine Master 300 is such a unique and special watch that replacing it was nearly impossible before the 383. So yeah, a lot of that comes down to the small dial and chunky bezel proportions. So yeah, more about that later on. Okay, so let's start off with the dial because this is where things get a little bit interesting for me. Well, I mean this and the bezel, but here we have an elevated matte black dial because the texture is a little bit coarser and just looks a bit more refined and in real life this makes the dial look much more blacker than a regular matte black dial that ends up looking quite gray. The rest of the dial is pretty much the same as the Steel Master dial because the indices are the same Marine Master 300 style indices but the Cardinal indices are a bit tapered which is noticeable when next to the Marine Master 300 but not so much so that it changes the overall character. And then we have the same unique hour and minute hand as the Steel Master which are different from the rest of the SPB lineup because the hour hand is a bit beefier and the minute hand it has a taper. Subtle changes once again but it makes quite a difference. Then of course we have the new GMT hand that I think is perfectly sized you know not too big yet not too small either considering the rest of the prominent dial elements and is done in polished gold which is also a wise decision because it kind of fades into the background depending on how it's reflecting light so yeah I can enjoy the fact that it's a GMT but also I can enjoy the fact that it's a diver first. Continuing on with gold the GMT is written in a subtle matte gold color just like the 300 meters is written in the same sort of gold in the Marine Master 300 and personally I'm so happy about this because this touch of gold makes such a unique impact on the Marine Master 300 alongside the second hand so yeah I really do feel at home seeing that combination here again on the 383 so yeah that makes me feel good. Next big thing is that this has a 24 hour chapter ring since this is a GMT watch after all and yeah I'm really happy that they kept this as a chapter ring because it keeps the dial clean and once again not taking away from the diverness of it all. And also another thing that it does is that 
it made the dial a little bit smaller, which is something that I really like because like I said before, the Marine Master 300 has a very small dial and chunky bezel, and this is doing the same thing because of the chapter ring squeezing it in a little bit. But the cool thing is that they still made the chapter ring bicolor because the top half is black and the bottom half is gray, which is a nice little detail that I wasn't expecting to see. Finally, the most controversial thing will be the placement of the date at the 430 position. And yeah, if you don't like 430 dates, then I mean, you won't like it no matter what I say here. But as far as I'm concerned, and as far as the 430 dates go, this one is just about one of the best, just because it's perfectly in the middle between the four and the five, and you only really see it when you want to see it. It really does fade into the background quite easily. Oh, and while we're talking about the GMT function and the date, the movement itself, the all new 6R54 has been great. It's settled into gaming about six-ish seconds a day, which I'm really happy about, and uh, adjusting the time, date, and 24 hand, you know, it all feels really good to me so far. Now onto the bezel in case, and like I said before, the bezel plays a huge role in why this watch works so well for me, and it's got that black ceramic insert, which is a little sloped, and it's got a little bit more of an angular and modern set of numerals as well, which is a nice change compared to the more classic numerals that we always find on all the other Seikos, like the Captain Willard and Slim Willard. Of course, the fact that it's a dive bezel in the first place instead of a 24-hour bezel is huge for me because there aren't that many diver GMTs out there. And going on with the dive bezel, I love that it's fully graduated, meaning that every minute has a marker, and that just makes it so much easier to get an exact time at a glance. And other Seikos do it halfway-ish because the numbers take the place of three minutes which is a bit off-putting, but either way, I'm happy with this one. Onto the bezel grip, and it's not the classic Marine Master 300 style or the one that's on the Steel Master for that matter, but rather it's the one that's kind of found on those $4,500 versions that came out. I don't know if they're limited editions. And actually, when I saw this 383 being released, and I saw this bezel, I immediately thought that this was a GMT version of those SLA versions, and immediately that would have priced me out. So yeah, thank God that <laughs> that was not the case. But yeah, the new grip is very grippy as you'd expect, and it's got the classic clicky Seiko bezel action, but this one is a much more elevated version of that, and it's easily one of the best, probably the best Seiko bezel short of the Marine Master 300. Let's listen to it. The case is exactly what I would want from a potential Marine Master 300 replacement because it's got the same exact case design as the Marine Master 300 with those super strong lugs, that swooping brushed accent from the top to the bottom of the case, and the super tapered underside and just overall curviness of it. And actually I noticed that that brushed line going from the top to the bottom is actually thicker than on the Marine Master 300, which I didn't notice until they were side by side, but yeah the more brushing the better for me. So it's got all that good stuff, but it's thinner, and also it's got a GMT in it as well. I mean, this is really spot on for me because that top heaviness of the Marine Master 300, which was down to the monoblock case, which was one of the coolest things, but it was an issue for me, but that's very much not the case here. And so yeah, I just get to see one of the best ever case designs ever in a more wearable package. Okay, so now onto the bracelet, and as you might have noticed, you didn't see much B-roll of it on the bracelet, and that's because when I got it, it was pulling hairs a bit more than I would have expected, or wanted to at the very least. Uh, so I immediately swapped it out onto this FKM rubber strap over here, and uh, yeah, just to make sure that the initial bonding experience with this watch wouldn't be marred by the hair pulling. And uh, yeah, by the way, the strap is linked in the description if you want it. All that aside, the bracelet itself is effectively a smaller version of the chunky Captain Willard and SPV143 bracelet because the links are shorter and thinner here, which for me is perfect because I always complain about those bracelets having unnecessary extra weight. And when the bracelet was on wrist and not pulling hairs, it did feel comfy, so your mileage may vary since hair pulling really depends on the thickness of your wrist hair. So yeah, I think I'll give this bracelet another go now that I'm already in love with the watch itself, but uh, yeah, I really do hope that there are some third-party options on the way. So there you have it. Let me know what you think about Seiko's first Prospects GMT down in the comments, and as always, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification bell button if you want to see more stuff as it comes in, because there's going to be a bunch more watches here. So uh, yeah, until the next video, good day.